What's up, everybody? It's Fresh Catch Friday at Siren Records Monterey. Welcome in. And uh, I'm so sorry to have missed you last week. And it was for a good reason, as I mentioned to you before. I got to go to see uh, my morning jacket for one big holiday in Cancun, Mexico. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and fangirl all over you for, you know, all of our time, which I could easily do. But let me just say, it was the time of my life. It was so good, so much fun, um, absolutely incredible time. If you've ever kind of thought about going to this and were on the fence, don't be. It is absolutely fabulous fun. And uh, I, I, could, I mean, it just made my year. It was just the best thing ever. And uh, big, big wholehearted thank you to ATO. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, thank you such as small words, but the gratitude is so big. So mm. having said that, uh, what I missed last week was talking to you about this. I'm using it for my pick of the week, even though technically it was last week, but you can probably figure there's no way I'm not going to talk about Band of Horses. And this is uh, from last week and it's called Things Are Great. This is their sixth, sixth album. And uh, it's been more than five years since they put anything out. Uh, this is Sonically. It's a return to their uh, earlier work. And it's kind of got that, that raw ethos that is the heart of Band of Horses. Um, it's emotionally intense. It's on a personal and elemental level. Um, it, we find the founder, Ben Bridwell, more autobiographical than ever. And he's, uh, you know, detailing these uh, nebulous frustrations of... Uh, the indignities of relationship changes and what a person will do to make it right. And it's a, it's a very good listen. You know, the thing about Band of Horses, they haven't had a, a clanker yet. You know, every single record they've put out has been absolutely wonderful. So um, yeah, they don't make shitty records. They're really, really a great band. This one is the indie exclusive, comes to us on this kind of rust colored um, transparent vinyl. Um, it's, just every time I listen to this record, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So yeah, absolutely love this. Um, I figured though, I should talk about something that really did come out this, this week. And um, I know people have been waiting for this. So um, I thought I should tell you it's Ghost Impera. And this is on Loma Vista. By the way, that uh, Band of Horses is on BMG Rights Management, just so you know, if, if you're interested in labels. Um, so anyway, this is Loma Vista. Ghoster right now, they're kind of um, one of the most uh, esteemed and celebrated rock bands around. Um, and this is the return with their fifth psalm called Impera. It's fronted by the newly anointed Papa Emeritus IV. It's a dozen songs um, take on themes of isolation and uh, demagogue worship, as well as the colonization of both space and mind. And it's all with the infectious hooky brand of their of rock that their fans have really kind of custom to. The end exclusive here is on orchid colored vinyl and it's got also with it a chronology of Papa's set of five stickers and a 28 page booklet of illustrations. Now the way to tell them apart uh, because you get the black vinyl or the orchid, um, the the indie exclusive, the colored vinyl with the stickers is by this kind of squared up sticker and it'll tell you right here orchid colored vinyl plus the stickers. The round one is the black vinyl. And you know, it's one of these things where they sort of wrote in gray on black. So it's ridiculously hard to read. Um, this one tells you that it's got the 28 page book of illustrations. It also does say that underneath here. So it's included in the India exclusive one as well, but good luck reading that black on black. So stupid, but um, anyway, that's here for you now. And uh, it's also available on cassette if that's what your little heart desires. Okay, so now let's get to it. So good. Okay, starting out. Uh, this is called A Place to Bury Strangers, uh, See Through You. And this is on the Dead Strange label. Um, it's, it brings um, their varied songwriting of their career to their sixth album here. Um, it's following up on 2021's highly acclaimed hologram EP and this has got a rebooted lineup of players here but it delivers this uh set of futuristic electronic you know punk music it's encoded with these uh industrial 
uh, rhythms and guitars and um, yeah, it's just like kind of an auditory annihilation sort of a thing. But uh, it, across 13 tracks, it's recorded in seclusion throughout the absurdity of the coronavirus pandemic. So here we go. Here's another offering of somebody that was uh, busy during the pandemic. So See Through You is proof positive that the group has hailed as the loudest band in New York is still finding new ways to push the needle deeper in the red. Indie exclusive limited edition where there is a yellow with a black marble colored vinyl as well as the black. How do we tell the difference? Not sure. You may have to just... Um, if you're in the store shopping, have the guys uh, shoot it with the barcode with the little gun and they can tell you what it is. This is also die cut around the eyes. So when you pull out that inner sleeve, um, this changes, okay? So there you go with that. Next is uh, the return of Brian Adams. So happy it hurts. This is on BMG Rights Management. And Brian says in a statement, the title song is about freedom, autonomy, spontaneity and the thrill of the open road. Um, the album of the same name touches on many of the ephemeral things in life that are really the secret to happiness and most importantly, human connection. So he says those themes were inspired once again by the COVID-19 pandemic and the pandemic and the lockdown really brought home the truth and that spontaneity can be taken away. And he explains that, you know, suddenly when all touring stopped, uh, no one could jump in the car and go. And so this is a set of uh, songs that are kind of around that sort of theme of, uh, I, I guess, you know, just uh, no more spontaneity and uh, freedom, things like that, that we, uh, we used to enjoy much more than we do now. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Big Wild. This is called Super Dream, and this is on Counter Records. Uh, rising producer, composer, and now turned vocalist Big Wild. His Actually, his name is Jason Stell. Um, he has released his highly anticipated debut record now. Um, he's garnered success with his collaborations and remixes. Um, Super Dream kind of verifies his individuality. Um, it's comprised of 12 tracks. Um, he plays like a, a funk and disco undertones with this, uh, weaving their way through this kind of you know, sonic landscape that he's creating of layers of different, um, well, I guess he's, he's, I don't know what he's doing as far as if he's just doing it all through synths or he seems to be doing it on his own. So I'm imagining that he's not really playing a lot of, uh, analog instruments on this anyway. Um, but the stuff here, when you listen to this, you can tell it's built for like massive crowds and festival audiences. So, you know, thinking in the future, you know, it's all kind of going to be very, um, it's, it's created for going on tour, for sure. Um, it's just, you know, gives you this urge to dance. It's like very irresistible, kind of like that. Anyway, this is on crystal rose colored vinyl and there is a download code with it too, okay? Okay, next up we have Colin Blunstone, One Year. It's a double, this is, comes to us on Sunday's music. Now, Colin Blunstone, if you don't know, was one of the zombies with uh, Rod Argent and um, their other guy. I'm so sorry, I forget his name. Um, but anyway, this is the 50th anniversary of his post oracle opus called One Year. And it's a double LP expanded edition on this. And um, the second LP itself is titled That Same Year, because this is a double. Um, and it gives you a deeper introspective look into the time in his life. Um, the, the album is uh, it largely features him singing accompanied solely by his acoustic guitar. Um, beautifully sparse demo versions of three songs from one year, including Caroline Goodbye and Let Me Come Closer to You, where Colin is joined by his fellow zombie Rod Argent on the piano. Okay, and the three songs have uh, Colin joined by zombie bassist. Here he is, Chris White. That's the guy's name. Okay, Chris White on classical guitar. So beyond the three familiar songs, you'll find um, Colin's uh, voice and wit come through on 11 completely unheard compositions, all penned for the one-year album. Um, so it somehow manages to be both like lush and sparse at the same time. It's uh, It's got liner notes that were written by him and uh, gatefold sleeve with unseen photos from that year. There's like uh, notes uh, go track by track through uh, one year along with um, background on that same year. So, 
that's a mouthful, but yeah, for those of you that are um, enthusiasts of that, it's like now expanded for you. Okay, then this is an interesting little thing. This is a Billy Cobham Spectrum, and this is on Friday Music. It's a reissue. Um, this is the solo debut album from this jazz fusion drummer, Billy Cobham. The album was influenced by earlier jazz fusion with Miles Davis, whom he had previously collaborated, um, and also his work with the Mahavishnu Orchestra. So the the bassist on this this you know was recorded at electric lady studios the bass player on this leland scalar he was saying that it was done in just two or three days every track that ended up on the record was like a first or a second take at most um so also in this outfit was uh the keyboard player jan hammer um, and he, they recall that the music was always recorded live and not fixed in any way afterwards um and also not very well known at the time, Tommy Bolin plays lead guitar on four of the songs of this. Now, Billy Cobham had met Tommy Bolin years before when Tommy Bolin was in this band called Zephyr. And um, so he, then also Tommy Bolin had recently joined the James Gang at this point and um, to record his first album with them prior to these uh, sessions. So he comes in and, and does some guitar work on here as well. Um, so then the weird thing is that there's a song on here called To the Women in My Life, and it's really unusual because Billy Cobham, he doesn't um, play on it himself. It's like kind of a, it's an unaccompanied piano piece performed by Jan Hammer, but there you go. It makes it onto the record. Um, this comes on either blue or red vinyl, translucent. Um, again, not giving us a lot of clues between the two, but if you look at the back, you will see one has a larger barcode sticker. This is the red one, and this is the blue one. Again, if you're in the store and you're shopping and it's confusing, just have one of the guys um, shoot the barcode there and uh, they can tell you what color it is. I just wish that they would be a little more forthcoming with the, the way that they do things like that. But, you know, it's been this way for a long time where I'm always complaining about it, and I'm not gonna stop. Okay. Now, this is Cruzados, and she's automatic. This is on Deco Music, and this is the long-awaited, much-anticipated third album. It's a collection of 11 all-new original songs titled She's Automatic. Um, the new uh, deliver deliveries of this band's um, signature rock and roll spirit, um, the first put them on the map like 30 years ago. Um, they were signed by record executive Clive Davis, and... Um, they released their debut in 1985 and um, After Dark, their other album in 1987 on Arista. Um, this spawned singles and videos, um, Motorcycle Girl and Bed of Lies, which be, were like MTV favorites and, you know, kind of good charting singles. Um, then they were also fan favorites in the live shows and they eventually found their way into these blockbuster motion pictures like Roadhouse and From Dawn Till Dusk, Desperado, that kind of thing. So it's that kind of music. And so here they are and they're back again and um, giving it another whirl, okay? All right, this, oh. Every Friday, right? Every Friday, just around now. Okay, Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, um, the Verve Acoustic Sound Series. This is an essential 1962 album. It showcases the modern jazz saxophone innovator performing alongside the colossus of jazz piano and composition. Only Coltrane uh, could be this fiercely tender, and there's no better forum for his sensitive side than the music of Ellington and Billy Strayhorn, who contributes the album's real gem called My Little Brown Book. So Verve Acoustic Sound Series, it um, features all analog remastered 180 gram vinyl in a deluxe gatefold packaging. So here for you now, all right? Next up is Franz Ferdinand, and this is called Hits to the Head, and this is a double. Um, this is on Domino Records, and it's 20 tracks. Um, greatest Hits Collection showcases the uh, world-conquering success of Franz Ferdinand's career to date alongside 18 classics. The album features two brand new tracks. One is called Billy Goodbye and one is called Curious. And they are co-produced by Alex Capranos, Julian Corey, and Stuart Price. Limited edition double red vinyl here. 16-page booklet with liner notes and unseen photos um, from the band's personal collection in a gatefold sleeve, plus a download code. 
All right, and then this um, is continuing on in the series of reissues of um, PJ Harvey with uh, new, new uh, remastered full record and the demos, okay? So this time it's the Hope of Six Demolition Project, and these are on Island Records. PJ Harvey recorded the Hope of Six Demolition Project behind a one-way glass as part of a public art installation in London's Somerset House. So it was originally released in 2016, and the reissue is accompanied by an album of previously unreleased demos. That'd be this one here, okay? So they're like companion pieces. Um, all right, so you've got 180 gram vinyl, full color gatefold outer sleeve on special Munkin board stock. I don't really know what that means. That's just what the note is about it, Munkin board. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything particularly, um, it's very thick cardboard, but I don't know, Munkin board. Um, it's printed inner sleeve with lyrics, folded poster of PJ Harvey with that was uh, photographed by Maria Monch. Monchnaz, gosh, I hope I'm saying her name right, and a limited edition um, time digital download card. No, sorry, limited time, limited edition. So it's not going to be forever that you get the download card. So you may want to pick this up now if that's your thing. Okay, and then there's the demos, and that's a, just like a collection of uh, 10 unreleased demos for her ninth, written for this ninth studio album. Um, it includes demos of The Wheel and The Community of Hope, um, features brand new artwork with a cover based on a drawing by PJ Harvey, plus previously unseen photos by Maria Monchnaz and Seamus Murphy. I guess that would be this. Okay, so we do. We love PJ. So that is another great thing to have on board here. Next up, we have Jenny Haval, Classic Objects. This is on 4AD. And now she's an Oslo-based musician, composer, and writer. She's got, um, uh, the way to describe her art is that she does this seamlessly interweaving between music and literary and visual arts. So she's uh, very much a performance artist in that way. Um, a lot of ways that she expresses herself. Um, she's released several solo albums and novels, including 2018's Paradise Rotan, 2020's Girls Against God, both published via Verso Books. So this is the indie exclusive on blue vinyl. No, this is the black one. The blue one, see, they look exactly alike, apart from this little sticker up here that tells us this one is on translucent blue vinyl. And this one says nothing, that's your black vinyl there. How hard really would it be to just like slap a little blue dot on there or something? I'm not gonna let this go, you guys. All right, up next, Kenny G, New Standards. This is on Concord Records. Um, since releasing his self-titled debut in 1982, Kenny G has become the top instrumental musician in the modern era and one of the best-selling artists of all time with global sales totaling, get this, more than 75 million records. Would you credit it? Really? His first new album in six years, New Standards, features 11 original compositions inspired by the jazz ballads of the 50s and 60s. Um, these new standards capture the sophistication, style, and romance of this time in jazz and combine it with his signature sound. So what you have here is two LPs. There's three sides and side four is etched. Um, so there he is, Kenny G, still doing it. Okay. Now, well, would it be a week if we didn't have a King Gizzard release? No, we have to have a King Gizzard release. <laughs> Okay, Mike, Mike's got the spins. You tell me. Here we go again. You're going to be doing this one for your collection? I feel they just ask too much of their fan base. It's really literally every week there is a new release. Okay, now the thing about this, this is called Live in Paris 19. This is on the Fuzz Club label, and this is the first in a trio of benefit live albums by the Australian psychedelic rock band King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Uh, which was released digitally to Bandcamp in 2020. So it was released simultaneously with the other live album, Live in Adelaide 19. The third album is Live in Brussels 19, was released five days later. Anyway, this is the American version on red, white, and blue vinyl. There's three LPs in here. So 
it's great. The packaging is beautiful. Um, I, I do truly really think this is a great band, but I just can't keep up with them anymore. And there's just too much. And, um, you, you know, I just, I, I really do feel that this is uh, quite a lot to, to be asking of your fan base. It's the official bootleg in that series that they're doing. And, uh, I don't know how much more we can do. So anyway, there you go, it's here. Next up we have uh, Kiss, Kiss Off the Soundboard, live in Virginia Beach. This is on the UME label. Now this is the next installment in their Off the Soundboard official bootleg series um, with the Virginia Beach show. It's recorded live at the Virginia Beach Amphitheater in July of 2004. And uh, this finds this band in the midst of their Rock the Nation tour which is notable for being the first full U.S. tour of the longstanding Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, Tommy Thayer, and Eric Singer lineup. So it's got the career-spanning 20-song set, and it includes classics like Lick It Up, I Love It Loud, and <laughs> the worldwide 1979 U.S. Billboard charting, I Was Made For Loving You and as well as these perennial KISS fan favorites all through. Um, it's astonishing 40 plus year back catalog that they've got to mine through for this stuff. So um, they're globally recognized as one of the, you know, great live bands and they are creators of what is um, considered the best live album ever, which was uh, 1975's KISS Alive. Now, you know, that's just what they're credited with. Some of us may, may not agree. You know, we probably would think in our heads, maybe perhaps we have heard better live albums. I think I have, but, um, you know, again, it's all, uh, it's all subjective, isn't it? All right. So this is, um, the Off the Soundboard series continues their legacy of groundbreaking live albums with a document of the spectacular larger than life extravaganza that is a Kiss concert. So that's here for you. And next up, this is Lewis Offman, Sonic Poems. And this is on Virgin Music. Uh, 24 years old, this guy, a French uh, electronic musical artist, um, multi-instrumentalist. Um, he finally announces his much-anticipated debut record here. Um, very typical of his universe is the single called Boom Boom that you may be familiar with if you listen to this um, type of thing. It definitely sounds like his next big anthem because he had um, a big hit with, what was his big hit? Well, anyway, he's produced by the guy that does Massive Attack, LCD Sound System, and The Rapture, stuff like that. Oh, his uh, big single was Attitude. That's what it was. Okay. So anyway, this one's all lined up to be like his next big anthem. So anyway, in addition to writing his songs, he's also composed for and produced for other artists. So, you know, he's just uh, on his way, 24 years old. Okay, now we have uh, Marina. This was of Marina and the Diamonds. You remember that? This is just Marina this time. Um, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land. This is on Atlantic. It's the fifth studio album from the Welsh singer-songwriter Marina. It was released in June of 2021. Now, I, I, I mean, you can't technically say that that's really a reissue. It's just, you know, how things have been so slow with the supply chain. I think that's why they keep bringing this stuff forward again as they catch up, just because I would imagine that in 2021, when this came out, it, there wasn't a really super big splash about it. And they probably weren't able to like press as many as they wanted to just because of these supply chain issues. So, you know, giving it a, like a little bit of uh, breathing a little more fire into it is what they're doing here. Okay, so um, she began writing music for this record in August of 2019, which was like five months after the release of her fourth studio album that was called Love and Fear. So this is a like electro pop dance pop record um, it explores themes like feminism, global warming, misogyny, heartbreak, and racism. So she is back. All right, this is interesting here. Johnny Marr, Fever Dreams, parts one through four. Um, this is on BMG Rights Management. Uh, this is the fourth full-length studio release from the former Smiths guitarist, Johnny Marr. It also was recorded during the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, with half of the tracks released on two EPs. That was the Fever Dreams Part 1 and 2 that we have talked about before. Um, 
in 2021. So strictly speaking, there's no surprises or detours within these 16 tracks yet. It's very um, unexpected to hear Johnny Marr maintain his drive through a full double album without lagging, you know, and uh, it, he really sounds very much in clear control of his craft with this, like, um, and that's kind of a pleasure to hear. Um, sonically, it's very firmly grounded in the indie of the late 80s and 90s, and it's keyboards that take the center stage here. It's uh, electro indie cuts that are very dance floor friendly, and anything that he's been involved with, um, like, since electronic, you know, it's uh, it's that kind of stuff. So a little bit of uh, um, across the board, you know, he's really moving in a lot of different things, you know, like I say, from the, the 80s, 90s kind of driven stuff all the way through to this electronic pop. So check it out if you like that. There's no Smith's touchstones on that record. It's just uh, Johnny Marr doing his thing. All right, here's a reissue, the Mars Volta Tremulant, and this is on Clouds Hill, on the Clouds Hill label, okay? This is the, Tremulant is the debut EP um, by the Mars Volta. It was released in 2002 on Gold Standard Labs. So um, this EP marks the only appearance of the founding bassist um, Eva Gardner. So it's actually a really good album to get someone into Mars Volta who's never really heard them before, um, just to get used to their music. Um, the musicianship is really top notch on this one and it's uh, with most of their records, it's more easily accessible as a whole though. There are never um, any singles on Mars Volta albums. So um, in that you kind of have to listen to the whole album and not just dive in at any spot. Anyway, this comes to us on Glow in the Dark Vinyl, here for you now, the debut. And this one here is also a reissue of uh, Midlake, and this is The Trials of Van Occupanther. Now, <clears throat> Midlake's got a new record coming out, I think next week it is, which I'm excited for. I really like Midlake, um, but this is like um, their sophomore album. They're a Texas-based rock band, if you're not familiar with them. Anyway, this um, is the 10th anniversary edition of this, and in, um, it, the cover artwork has been reimagined. Um, it's got this uh, neo-impressionist kind of uh, uh, thing done by this uh, guy who's a skateboarder, Brian Lottie, who does a lot of artwork for um, for different things, so you may be familiar with his name. Um, the original album was accompanied by a special bonus seven inch featuring two previously unreleased tracks. Unrelaxed, unreleased tracks, sorry. Um, but anyway, this is just a chance for you to familiarize yourself. I wouldn't even say this is their best album, but um, they are consistent and they're good. So, you know, if you're kind of a, a person that likes to own the catalog of a band, this is, uh, here you go, it's for you now on gold vinyl and with a download card. I'm really looking forward to their new release though next week because um, they're solid, I like them. All right, next up is the on Kill Rockstar's label. This is the Raincoats, um, the 40th anniversary remaster of their debut studio album. Uh, they're they're an English rock band, the the Raincoats, um, a post punk band. Um, this was released in 1979 as one of the first records issued by the London based independent label Rough Trade. Um, the album is best known for its off kilter cover of Lola by the Kinks, and um, it also has a track called The Void that was covered by Hole in 1994. So they're this, like I said, this experimental British post-punk band, um, Anna De Silva and Gina Birch, they formed the group in 19, 1977 while they were students at Hornsey College of Art in London, signed to Rough Trade, and they released three albums. Now you can get this two different ways. One is on black vinyl, and this one with the fancy sticker here is what they're calling... Um, KRS 30 vinyl. Now, what does that mean? I was trying to look it up online and I think it may be pink. Um, I don't know why they just can't say that, but I, I guess we're lucky that they said anything because that's telling you right here. And this one is your black vinyl, okay? <coughs> All right, now, oh, 
okay, got to just tell you about this one because it's already sold out. And that was Rex Orange County, who cares, um, on RCA. His first studio album since 2019's critically acclaimed Pony. Um, this one, Who Cares, was made in close partnership with musician Benny Sings over the course of a few sessions in um, his Amsterdam studio, Benny Sings' Amsterdam studio. So after spending the bulk of 2020 quarantined back at home in the UK to, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Rex made the trek to Amsterdam that fall to record with Benny Sings. What started as sessions without expectations turned into this... Uh, productive 48-hour window of recording with Benny, prompting a follow-up trip to Amsterdam. The subsequent 10 days of work together produced his fourth album, made in close partnership with Benny. It's a playful record by an artist in a playful mood. Um, the album opens to find Rex uh, reunited with Tyler, the creator, who contributes a verse to the track called Open a Window, which marks the first time the two have collaborated since Tyler's uh, 2017 album, Flower Boy. Now, um, like I said, they came in and they blew out the door today. So um, they're already on reorder and they'll be back early next week. But if you come in this weekend, I'm afraid you would be disappointed because they are gone. All right, next up, Ravi Shankar, Chance, Chance of India. This is on BMG Rights Management. Uh, this was originally released in 1997 on Angel Records. It's produced by his friend and sometime collaborator, George Harrison. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, the album consists of Vedic and other Hindu sacred prayers set to music, marking a departure from Ravi Shankar's more familiar work in the field of Hindustani classical music. Um, this, uh, the lyrical... Um, themes of the record are peace and harmony among nature and all creatures. The the chanting, that's what that's about. So for the album, to, um, the sessions took place in the Indian city of Madras and at Harrison's home on Henley on Thames in Oxfordshire. So following um, up with his work on the Beatles anthology stuff, that's when he jumped in here to uh, do some recording with Ravi Shankar. Um, this is a limited edition double red vinyl and it has an exclusive photo print. All right, now we're, um, we've got some soundtracks for you. This one is Dear Evan Hansen. Um, it comes to us through Interscope, original motion picture soundtrack, a film adaptation of the Tony and Grammy award-winning musical about Evan Hansen, a high school senior with social anxiety disorder and his journey of self-discovery and acceptance following the suicide of a fellow classmate. So in addition, to fan favorite cast recordings on this. Um, the soundtrack includes new songs for the film and covers from people like SZA and Sam Smith and Phineas. So um, this is, it comes on two LPs on blue vinyl. All right. And the next up we have, uh, all right, this is from music from the emotion picture, You've Got Mail. And this is on Real Gone Music, and this is the first time that this has been on vinyl. The soundtrack is from the 1998 romantic comedy, um, You've Got Mail, and this is on highlighter yellow vinyl. And it's got, as you can see from here, it's got the Cranberries, Harry Nilsson, Bobby Darren, Louis Armstrong, Randy Newman, Stevie Wonder, Sinead O'Connor. It's got like, you know, a lot of good people on it. So um, also, I believe the Real Gone Music was supposed to have... Um, Sleepless in Seattle, they're releasing that as well. Um, the, we're missing a box, and I think that it's in that box. So um, that's technically supposed to be out, but it's on the road, all right? This is Irma Thomas, Full Time Woman, the Lost Cotillion album, and this is on Real Gone Music as well. Uh, this is the Soul Queen of New Orleans. She enjoyed a run of national success in the U.S. in the mid-60s with a Classics like Wish Someone Would Care, Anyone Who Knows What Love Is Will Understand, along with the original vocal version of Time Is On My Side, which went on to later be a massive hit for the Rolling Stones, recorded on Imperial Records. So following a short stint at Chess Records, Irma recorded for Canyon before being signed to Atlantic Records by the label's much-renowned executive Jerry Wexler. And a first session in 71 yielded one single, Full-Time Women, Woman, which um, failed to chart, but Undaunted Atlantic arranged further sessions for Irma in Detroit, Miami, and Philadelphia throughout 1972. Yet none of the material was ever issued until 2014 
on a CD collection. So now some 50 years after they were originally recorded, Full-Time Woman, the Lost Cotillion album, brings all of her recordings for Atlantic under its Cotillion imprint to LP for the very first time. So this is on light blue vinyl and uh, yeah, long time waiting for that, huh? Next up, this is Vitalik, 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 I'm not sure, but it's called um, Flash Bomb, Flash Mob. Why can't I talk today? Flash Mob. And it's um, on the different recordings label. This is the second studio album by this French electronic music artist, Vitalik. The album was released in 2009 originally. 13 razor, razor sharp nuggets um, perfectly performed uh, ruthless um, electro. So although noticeably warmer and sweatier in nature than his previous signature, um, his, his stamp is all over this record, though. It's not that you wouldn't recognize it. Um, it's not only an evolution in Vitalik's sound, but it was a giant step ahead for electronic music in general. And it comes to you on white vinyl. So that is available now. Now, this one I expect is going to do very well. It's another one that is uh, reissued, and it is Summer Walker, still over it. This is on the Love Renaissance label, and it's the second studio album by American singer Summer Walker. And I just can't tell you how, for us, her stuff just blows out the door. So this is like a, a chance to get this. It was originally released in 2021, but it's another one of these that kind of got pushed back in the fray of, um, I'm, I'm suspecting um, supply chain issues. So the album contains guest appearances from Cardi B, JT from City Girls, SZA, Ari Lennox, Lil Durk, Pharrell Williams, Almerion, and Ciara. So it's a direct follow-up to Walker's debut album, over it, which uh, came out in 2019, still over it is considered a story that's exploring Walker's tumultuous relationship with producer uh, London on the track before, during, and after her pregnancy. So each song is aligned to a timeline starting from August of 2019 through to October of 2021. So the album shares a contemporary R&B appeal um, with 2000s R&B neo soul and trap elements throughout. All right, you guys, there we go. That is our lineup for this week. So I hope you had a great week. Um, I'm still struggling with, um, you know, being in denial about being back from my fabulous, fabulous vacation. Um, like I said, if you ever, ever get the chance or you've been on the fence about going to see One Big Holiday, My Morning Jacket, it is four days of music and, um, you know, just the best time ever. So I would highly, highly recommend it. Anyway, I'm going to post the list for you down below with prices and um, would love it if you would subscribe, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give us a comment about what you're looking forward to, something like that. And um, thanks for joining me and I will see you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody.